Hi guys, Rayan Solomon here with Design Fusion, and today we'll be going over 3D printing and additive manufacturing using Solid Edge 2021. So here you can see we have a fairly simple part that we would like to 3D print, and I'll be going over how you can prepare and validate this part before sending it to the printer. So here on the 3D print tab, we have a bunch of commands here, and I'll be going over each one and how they can simplify our job. So starting from the left here, we have the set planes command. This allows you to create sectioned views of your model so you can observe the inside from different angles. So to use this command, you'll need to start by selecting a reference plane, then select your start point and your end point. So anything between the start point and this end point is going to be displayed. You can also toggle off the dynamic clipping so now you can see the inside of your part. And of course you can do this with uh, different directions or even at angles if you create an angled plane. And then you can toggle this on and off using this on button here. Now the physical thread command is a very powerful tool that was added in Solid Edge 2020. This command allows you to convert threads into actual physical threads that you can send directly for printing. Now, before Solid Edge 2020, you'd have to physically create your own threads by creating a thread profile and using the appropriate formulas for the thread standard you're using, and it can be a very tedious job. I had to do this myself, so this feature is actually amazing. Now, you'll see when I click on physical threads, you'll get this uh, pop-up saying enabling physical thread option may cause performance impact. For our case here, it won't have much of an impact since we only have four threads. But if you have a large assembly open with over 50 or so threads, your performance could decrease drastically. And this is why I believe it was in the fourth maintenance pack of Solid Edge 2020 that they disabled this feature as a default setting. So you won't be able to turn on physical threads with the default install. You'd have to go and edit into your options.xml file and enable it or ask your IT department to enable that for you. So we'll go ahead and click yes to continue. And then on the command bar here, there's an option to select all the threads on your model and then click to accept. Now, once the threads are completed, it's going to give you a log file that will show you if each one succeeded or failed. And we can close this real quick. Now you can see it actually converted our graphic thread into actual physical threads, which is a complete game changer for 3D printing. Now we have the delete voids command, and this is extremely important for 3D printers using powder bed technology. Since powder bed technology prints in a bed of powder, any internal voids would be filled with powder and it would be trapped inside there since it's an enclosed cavity. If it was an FDM printer, this wouldn't be an issue because it's a style of printer that will not leave any material trapped inside. It goes layer by layer and extrudes material and so it can be beneficial for those kind of printers to lightweight the part. However, with powder bed printers, it's important to avoid any internal voids because it's simply a waste of powder and has no benefit. You're not lightweighting the part if there's powder trapped inside there. So now we'll click the check voids button and here it will identify the internal void. You can see the green uh, and filled area there. So we can click on the X there to delete it. And you see a feature was created in the pathfinder. So in case you want the void back, you can go and just delete that feature. We're going to skip uh, these two features for now. We're going to jump to the wall thickness. So this wall thickness command allows you to display regions that has a lower wall thickness tolerance than what you specify. So we'll go ahead and enter a wall thickness of 0 0.5 and you can actually go into the options here and choose your colors and your display resolution. Uh, we'll choose fine since we have a fairly small part and it won't really affect our performance. And you hit close to get out of there. So we'll go ahead and click the calculate button now. And you can see it's going to display the areas of concern in red. 
Of course, you can toggle the display on and off to show only the areas of concern. And depending on your printer tolerances, you can check to see if your model will print without any concerns. So now the overhang command. This is important for FDM style printers that print layer by layer by extruding material out of an orifice. So you can imagine if I have the part um, laying like this and bottom here is on the bottom of the printer plate, it's going to be printing in layers from the bottom to the top. So it's going to print layer by layer and it's going to move up little by little. It's going to print that whole area. And this is, this is fine as it's going up and it's going up. But when you get to this area here, these, these sides here are, when it's laying down material to print, there's nothing below these materials to support it up there. So what these printers do, it creates support material under these areas. So when it gets to that level, there's material there to support it. So it won't just fall. Of course, you want the least amount of support material because you have to scrape these support materials off of the part once you're done printing. So to be more efficient, it's better to print in a way that you have the least amount of support material. So we'll go back into the overhang command. And here's where you enter your maximum overhang angle. And then we hit calculate and it will display where the support material will be needed. So you can see this bottom area, you won't need support material there since it's going to be flat on the printer bed. But these three areas here is where it's going to need support material. And you can go ahead and toggle the display here so it's going to show you only the areas where support material is needed. And of course different printers and materials are going to have different um, angles, right? Different maximum angle that they can support. So a stronger material will um, require a uh, can handle a higher maximum angle and therefore require less support material. You'll see when I hit uh, calculate, this area is going to reduce a bit. But we can see that this orientation still requires quite a bit of uh, support material. So we'll go ahead and go over to our reorient command here. And this is where we can uh, play with the orientation of the model and how it's going to be printed so it's done so in the most efficient manner. So we can go into the settings here and then this is where you can put in your printer size, the width, depth, and height, and then choose your display resolution. We'll change ours to fine, it's a fairly small part. And we can do a quick visual check to see which orientation should be printed so we have the least amount of support material. We want the least amount of floating areas like these handles here on the side. So I'm going to rotate my part uh, 90 degrees about the x-axis. And I can do a visual check to see that I should only need support material in this area over here. because This is the only area that's kind of floating. We'll exit out of this and we'll go back to the overhang command and to see how much support material is needed if we print it in this orientation. So we'll go ahead and enter 50 again and hit calculate. Now you can see we drastically reduced the amount of support material we needed just by changing that orientation. Keep in mind the whole bottom face there is going to be flat the printer bed so no support material will be needed. So obviously this is the better decision to uh, print in this orientation. So next we'll go into the printer uh, validation command and this is sort of like an all-in-one function where you can choose your material, the display resolution and uh, which of the, these checks you want to look at and the colors of each and then of course we already went over the wall thickness and overhang but there's uh, degenerate triangles you can check for, intersecting triangles and um, non-manifold edges. So we'll go ahead and check some of these off just to see how it works. We'll enter our uh, uh, minimum thickness of a half a millimeter again. Check that on and just hit compute. And then you can see the results here in the box. You just select it and it's going to show you the areas here. Overhang as we already went over. So now let's look at the print uh, material command. Here's where you have all your 3D print materials and uh, you may not have any in here if you haven't um, added them in your library. So I'll show you quickly how to do that. 
you want to double click on your material and open up the material table here you can either create a new library or just create an existing uh, a new material in the existing folder so just right click on the folder hit new material um, enter in a name for it uh, we'll go ahead and enter tpu and then you want to right click on the material and go to add custom property so here for the name you want to give it 3d print for the type you want to change it to text and then for the value just enter in yes and then hit ok and now click save so this now just saved this material as our 3d print uh, material library so now when we go back to this command you'll see that tpu material has just been added Now the last command we have here is the export command. So this export command gives you two options. You can either export to STL or 3MF. Now STL is an older file format which describes only the surface geometry of a three-dimensional object without any color, texture, or other cat attributes. It's basically just triangulated surfaces. Now uh, 3MF is a much newer file format for 3D printing and delivers more information including mesh, textures, colors, and materials. And another uh, big benefit is that it's impossible to create a 3MF file with non-manifold edges and that can lead to errors when printing the model. Now the last cool thing I want to show you guys, if you go here to the Solid Edge application button and then go to the 3D print, you're going to see it's uh, going to be generating the 3D print preview here. It's going to load up. And of course, you can modify your printer size again if you need to here. So you'll notice here it gives you some overall dimensions of your part. But the cool part is if you go to order online, um, it will show you this message that uh, the order online option will share your model details with the 3D print service provider. So if you're doing any proprietary work or uh, any uh, prototyping that you want to keep those designs um, to yourself maybe you don't want to go this route but if you're just printing standard uh, models and you're not worried about anything proprietary you can go ahead and use this feature so it's going to load up here and um, i've already loaded up my part but uh, if you haven't you you may also need to sign up for this account you can sign up put it in your email and then you can upload your stl or 3mf files here and you'll see on the right hand side it's going to give you a bunch of different vendors and service providers that will um, that can print these for you and it gives you some price ranges as well and we also offer 3d printing services so if you want feel free to reach out to us as well and we could definitely get you a quote and that concludes our video thanks for watching